Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Bam Jun Choi, and I'm currently a PhD student, so I'm not a doctor, <laughs> student at Columbia University and working at NIMS for my military service. So today, uh, as Professor Yong Jung Kim introduced, uh, I'm going to talk about this starvation driven diffusion and my goal is how, we, how can we get this starvation driven diffusion equation from a microscopic kinetic equation and I want to ask how uh, like okay those things mm. so as I mentioned our goal is derive star starvation driven diffusion and one thing we should mention is when we see our population, they don't discuss. I mean, they know their density, but they, discur they don't discuss and decide whether they depart more or less. They just behave by their way. So, <clears throat> so uh, my goal is I want to describe this transi transition phenomena, as I mentioned, from microscoping level to macroscoping level. And this explanation should be based on the assumption that each individual is not capable of sensing gradient, like gradient of starvation measure gamma. Okay. This is our model. This is system of 4n equations in Rn. And for, we have two phenotypes for u and v, and each u has two n components from one plus minus to n plus minus, and each ui means the population density of u moving in plus or minus ei direction. So in case of R2, there are four components for u, with u1 plus, which moves to the right, and u1 minus to the left, and u2 plus to the upward, and u2 minus to the downside. And there are two phenotype for b. So those two equations has one difference here, KU and KV. So this left-hand side describes just transport, and this right-hand side describes their transition. So I assume, I will assume throughout this presentation, KU to be, KU and KV to be constant, and KU is greater than KV. This means KU, uh, U change their direction more frequently than V. And this will give you uh, more small diffusivity in the limit for U and large diffusivity, larger diffusivity for V in their epsilon zero limit. And as Yongzheng mentioned, we have special term here. U and V can change their type throughout the equation. And their frequency is determined by special function f and g, which has spatial heterogeneity. This spatial heterogeneity usually comes from the variation of our source, or resource, food, carrying capacity, whatever, this kind of thing. So this is our equation, and I want to investigate what this will be when epsilon goes to zero. And I should mention that this equation has long history. If you only see this part, I mean only one phenotype without transition, oh. P 
people call it Kalemantide kinetic equation, and this has been investigated, investigated for a long time by like famous mathematicians like Toscani, Leons, Vasquez, like this. And this Kalemant proposed this model, and Kurtz has been started started to investigate this kind of limit first, and so on. And we just do did so we just did some modification of this model to fit our case. And uh, we will make our problem as simple as possible. So I will assume this is initial value problem and periodic boundary condition. So this gives us no problem in boundary integral. And our F should have some condition F and G. This transition F and G should have condition like to make problem non-singular and non-degenerate such as they should have upper bound and lower bound and they have to be increasing with respect to population density. This is quite natural because if you have more population you should change your shape more often. That's our thing. And they have small, I mean, not singular variation in special direction. So this is our theorem. When epsilon goes to zero, this ui epsilon and vi epsilon converges to the same u over 2n and v over 2n and this u and v should have ratio determined by f and g like this because we have this term and if beta is less than 1 their total population density should satisfy this kind of diffusion equation. And this diffusivity is determined by their ratio, which also determined by F and G, like this. And in the special case when beta is 1, you have one more term. If you see this part, it, have, it has one more term than gamma. It creates some additional diffusion term, and this has form like this. And I should mention, what is this limit? People call this limit diffusion limit of that kinetic equation. And this can be obtained by parabolic scaling of epsilon 1 equation. And it could be think of as large time and large collision frequency limit of our original equation. And beta less than one means just, as I mentioned, there are two kinds of transition. Transition of direction and transition of phenotype. And beta, beta less than one just means interphenotype transition should be much slower than interdirectional transition in the limit. And beta equals 1 means they should be in the same order and this creates, we think, I think this creates additional diffusion term in the limit. So there is some notations. If I write, write u, that just means total population of u. V just means total population of V. And you should remember these four terms. Uh, we call it flux term J. JI just means flux of U going from minus I direction to plus I direction. And JIV is the same one, same thing for V. And if you like in vector form, I will call it J flux. And you will see this J will behave like gradient of U in the limit. So estimate 
of this J is very critical thing to obtain our result. And I also introduced this new term H. This is just difference between uh, F U I and G V F F U R F U and G V, and this measures uh, like difference of our epsilon state from the limit. So for the existence theory, uh, basically I will skip it, and we just need to know it has global existence from comparison principle. And what I'm going to do is the very critical estimate on the flux. Like those who working in elliptic or parabolic equations know that those energy estimate is very critical to prove some singular perturbation problem or approximation kind of thing. So we need the same thing, epsilon independent flux estimates. So our goal is to prove following proposition. This flux term for U and V and H term should have L2 bound, which bound does not depend on epsilon. And from this, you directly know that if you have this, you can prove UI should be should converge to the same one and VI to the same one and their ratio should be zero. Uh, their weighted ratio should be zero. And we use <coughs> entropy method. So we define our heterogeneous entropy like this for functions psi you define uh, heterogeneous local entropy and you integrate with respect to x to get entropy functional and our entropy is defined as uh, sum of all the entropies for ui and vi and if you if you use this our main equation and you, you compute the time derivative of, of total entropy, you get the following five terms. And this first term here, you should see this nebula x just means mm, derivative with respect to those two x variable and partial x is just derivative with respect to second variable. So this first term vanishes by divergence theorem, and this last three term is good for us because it has sign negative, and we only need to control this second term, which comes from the fact that we are dealing with heterogeneous equation. And if you, uh, the thing is, if you do, if you carefully write down this bad term, you can split them into two parts, and these two parts can be absorbed into entropy and this good term. So finally, we get this type of coronal inequality to get L2 flux estimate of this, this, and this three term. So, uh, after proving this proposition, uh, I will skip like the standard uh, deep lemma means divergence lemma to prove uh, those total density has strong convergence subsequence. And if you receive this, it, uh, we can prove each UI should converge this to u of 2n, u over 2n and v over 2n for some u and v, which sum up to give you total density and their ratio is given by f and g. 
And we need to identify which diffusion equation this law should satisfy. To do this, if you take epsilon zero limit of this equation, this comes from our main equation, you get this conservation law. And if beta is not 1, you get this. So these two relation directly gives you our starvation driven diffusion, which looks like this. And if beta is 1, you don't have epsilon term here. So we should specify what these terms are. And you can do this. <laughs> so you can prove the lizard. So this is, and uh, I didn't mention the initial data. And low should have initial data of this. And even if I omit it, it's very easy consequence. And this is my final section. So I want to know what kind of gamma we can describe by choosing good F and G. So uh, as I started, we assume gamma to be function of our starvation measure, which is total density divided by our research function, and f to be function of those starvation measure, and g to be the same form. And research function should behave well, like there is upper and lower bound, and gradient should have bound. Then we have following proposition to describe possible shape of gamma that we can create from this model. So that says, if gamma has upper bound one over uh, upper bound k n over n and lower bound, uh, sorry. upper bound 1 over nkv and lower bound 1 over nku, then you can rewrite gamma as this form. So our proposition says if this gamma hat has this kind of relation, we can always find some f hat and g hat of This form that gives you this gamma hat profile in the limit. So this restriction is the uh, yeah complete description of our gamma when it has this kind of upper and lower bound. So. One typical example are shapes like this, or this, or even it can have shapes like this. Yeah. This is the end of my talk. Thank you. <laughs>